It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. I remember uh, years ago we were walking through the airport and um, I think we've told this story before, but they're on the shelf at a bookstore in the airport. It was not a Christian bookstore. It was not a Christian book stand. But there was a title that just jumped out at me and it was called The Power of the Blood of Christ by Andrew Murray. This and was I said, probably Mark, 20 years ago, maybe. Yes. Mm -hmm. I said, look at there, I'm gonna go get that book. So I marched over and bought the book. Yeah, she, uh, she said, um, I think we ought to get that book. And I was uh, like a little bit like, um, I don't need a book on the blood of Christ. I mean, I was raised in church. I know about the blood. And uh, my dad and my mom, you know, they preached and they taught on the blood. My grandpa. So I was a little insulted because I mm -hmm. thought, why are you going to get a book on the blood of Jesus? I said, well, I don't care. If you want to get it, you get it. So she got it. Well, I opened it up, and if any of you read Andrew Murray, what a wonderful writer wonderful he writer, is. Yeah. And such a student of the Word. My and, favorite quotes uh, from Andrew Murray's book are in this book, The Bloodline of a Champion. So I just got my favorite quotes, and I put them in there, and I still have the pages turned down. My favorite quotes from Andrew Murray's book. So You quote um, them, I think. <laughs> he quotes them so much, he thinks he said them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I still give him credit, but I, I actually I quote them, and then I kind of add a few things, a few different words for my own personal understanding. Yeah, it's so rich. And so it was like uh, that day was like the Lord just dropped uh, something into our hearts. Wow. And it was like it got our attention and changed our direction and our focus in yeah. studying the Word. In fact, uh, around that time, I remember the Holy Spirit said, I want you to memorize. <laughs> he did. He said that. Uh, Hebrews 10, 19 through 23. Uh -huh. And so I remember we were at a hotel. I got my Bible out. I was outside and I started memorizing the passage of mm. scriptures. And from then on, I know why. Mm. These are vital. This topic is what we need. Wow. In the church, it's our overcoming power. It's yeah. our overcoming song. It's the strength wow. of the church. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we need to know about it. Yeah. And so we're just going to study about it. And so what you, you did, Trina, she, she read the book by Andrew Murray. And then I guess she left it laying around by my chair or something. <laughs> so I started looking at it and I thought, well, you know, I thought I already knew that. And so it's amazing how many things you can actually think you already know that are not really working that well in your life. Mm -hmm. How many things of the word in the scriptures you said, well, I already know that. Uh, but I realized there was a lot that I had maybe forgotten uh, and there was still a lot that I didn't know. Right. And uh, so the power of the blood of Christ and uh, studying that for the last 20 years. So we've got a bunch of CDs on the subject and every one of them just has a different facet of the power of the blood of Jesus. And uh, that blood has power and has worked effectually yes. um, in heaven. It has done something powerful in the very presence of God in the holy place, the blood of Jesus. And that blood is powerful over Satan and his works and devils or demons or strategies of the enemy. And that blood has power to reach into the heart of the believer and to cleanse you from an evil or a guilty conscience or to remove self-condemnation, to set your heart free and produce a righteousness consciousness through faith in the blood of Jesus. Amen. And so it's a topic that we always want to keep before our heart, before our eyes, hmm. keep in our mouth. 
um, not to assume that we already know everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, you know, that's that's a mental assent. Mm -hmm. I know that. No, you can be defeated with mental assent. Mm -hmm. The only way we win is through faith. Faith is a victory. Yeah. And we must have active living faith mm -hmm. in the blood of Jesus and what it has done, what it is doing, and what it can do to help us overcome every single day. Amen. So this is the victory. This is the victory. Which is our faith. So Amen. we want to look at the subject of faith in the blood. And so all this week, we're going to be studying faith in the blood. And if you just now got online here, the free book this week is The Bloodline of a Champion. And you can go to markhankins.org. We'll give you this book absolutely free. I encourage you to go through it, underline your favorite parts, and just go over those over and over again. And so we're going to study on faith in the blood which means my belief, I believe in the power of the blood. I have confidence in the power of the blood. Mm -hmm. So we're going to look at Romans chapter 3 and verse 25. So Romans 3, 25. So if you have your Bible right where you're at, uh, look at it. It'll do you good to look at Romans chapter 3, verse 25. Mm -hmm. And Romans 3, 25 is in a power-packed uh, passage of Scripture from Romans 3, 21 through verse 27. But Romans 3.25 is where we get the phrase that we're going to be studying this week. In Romans 3.25, it says, Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood. So underline that in your Bible. And uh, Dad Hagen used to say, <laughs> you need to have your Bible underlined and marked up. And, and, uh, and so that way you can remember yeah. the, the important phrases. Right. So he says, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission, the remission of sins that are passed through the patience or the forbearance of God. So we just want to look at this phrase and we'll look at it every day this week. He says, through faith in his blood. Through faith in his blood. So if we're going to live by faith and overcome by faith and walk by faith, one of the great facets of living by faith is simply having faith in the blood of Jesus. So Andrew yeah. Murray said it this way in his book, and he says, faith is largely dependent on knowledge. If knowledge of what the blood of Jesus can or has accomplished is not accurate, then faith expects little or has little expectation. And the more powerful effects of the blood are limited. Feeble ideas of its power prevent the deeper and more perfect manifestations of its effects. So he's simply saying here that if you're going to have faith in the blood of Jesus, your faith is largely dependent on accurate knowledge knowledge of what the blood of Jesus has done for us. He said, if you don't have accurate knowledge, then you have really little expectation. Mm -hmm. So he says, to have faith in the blood, you must have accurate knowledge of the blood. And so the second thing he says here, as we find out what the scriptures teach about the blood, we will see that faith in the blood can produce greater results in us than we have yet known and in the future, a ceaseless blessing may be ours. Interesting, isn't it? As we study the Word, in other words, don't just casually look at it, but right. study the Word. He said, we'll find out what the blood of Jesus has done for us. And he said, and it can actually produce greater results in us than we have ever known. In the future, a ceaseless blessing may be ours. That, that uh, phrase, ceaseless blessing, wow, that stands out. You know, everybody, you go anywhere in church or whatever, be blessed, be blessed, be blessed. Uh, oh, I'm blessed, you know. But do we know the depth of that statement? Blessed. Yeah. A ceaseless blessing may be ours wow. because uh, you found some uh, things out about the blessing yes. that is totally related to the blood of Jesus. Actually, many years ago, I was teaching when we were pastoring uh, and I was teaching a series on the blessing of the Lord. And so I taught a whole series week after week on the blessing of the Lord. 
and very, very powerful subject on the blessing. And I know the Bible school I went to, I think some of the theologians and the professors and the doctors were a little frustrated. They call it the blessing gospel. And they got frustrated with it. But the truth is that, the, that it says God, in Galatians 3, 8, God preached the gospel to Abraham that in thee all nations would be blessed. And so the gospel definitely in the center mm -hmm. of the gospel is the blessing of the Lord and the power of that blessing. So while I was studying on the blessing, then I looked I had a giant dictionary in my house and I looked up the word blessed and it had it B-L-E-S-T. And this dictionary came down and it said the original word blessed uh, came from the word blood. That's Bless incredible. came from the word blood. And they said, and that definition came from in the Old Testament when the priest would take the sacrifice in to the holy place and then the sins would be washed away or they would be covered for another year. Then the priest would always come out and pronounce a blessing. Right. In other words, the blessing was connected to the blood sacrifice. Praise God. So when you say, be blessed, you are like a priest. You know, we're kings and priests. We're sprinkling the blood on somebody. In the blood is true blessing mm -hmm. because Christ's redemption work is in his blood. Re Christ um, has redeemed us. Yeah, Galatians 3.13. With his blood. Amen. Christ hath redeemed us. The word redeemed means he purchased our freedom. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. And then he says that he was made a curse for us that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles Amen. through faith, even the promise of the Holy Spirit. The blessing might come on the Gentiles through faith. Mm -hmm. The blessing of Abraham. Now, I remember when I first understood something about the blessing of Abraham, I thought, that sounds really uh, something that doesn't apply to me. Well, little did I know, it does apply everything to me. And I found out there in Deuteronomy 28, there was a blessing hmm. that Abraham received if they obeyed yeah. the covenant, kept the law, kept uh, covenant with God, then these blessings would overtake you. you know, Bless you, you shall be in your body, your family, your <laughs> cattle, your and so forth, everything. But on the other hand, there were curses if you didn't follow that blessing. Mm. But Christ redeemed us from the, from curse, the curse because he became wow. a curse where? For us. For us on the cross. Because cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. Yeah. So Jesus took that curse upon himself that the blessing may come upon us. Mm -hmm. It says, through faith. Now we're talking about through faith in what Christ has done for us. In Romans 3.25, he says specifically, through faith in his blood, the blessing of the Lord. So he says there's two important things here. Number one, uh, faith is dependent upon knowledge. There's mm -hmm. not just knowledge. Sometimes people forget, but to be reminded, to be conscious of the power of the blood of Jesus and what it has done for us mm -hmm. in heaven, what it does in our hearts, but also what that blood has done over Satan and all of his accusations and all of his strategies, the power of the blood of Jesus. So he says, we are blessed because of the blood. So I, I preached that whole, uh, wow, who knows how many sermons <laughs> on the blessing. So I said, you actually are blood blessed. Blood blessed. Amen. Now my mama would do what we call, uh, I would call it slinging blood everywhere. How'd she do that? <laughs> well, I got the phrase from uh, Hebrews 9 and yeah. 10. It says, when the people came to worship mm -hmm. and uh, something Andrew Murray said, I thought was very good. He said, the sprinkling of the blood is the highest act of worship. In other words, there's a lot of praise and there's a lot of things that we can do to magnify the Lord. He said, but the moment the blood 
is brought into that conversation or that singing or that praise or that worship. He said, the blood will bring you into the highest act of worship in magnifying and worshiping God. So he said, the blood and consciousness of the blood, whether you're singing about it, but it lifts the soul and lifts the heart right into the very presence of God. And you're there in his presence, worshiping him. And so the blood is the highest act of worship. So anytime they came to worship, it says in Hebrews chapter nine, this is all repeated in, in, uh, in Exodus. They said it in Hebrews nine, Paul repeats it. Mm -hmm. And he says this, that when they came to worship, that the priest would take blood and it said Moses would take blood and he would sprinkle all the instruments of worship. He would sprinkle every instrument of worship. Then he said he would sprinkle the book, which is the Bible, which is the scriptures, which we call the blood covenant. So he would sprinkle the book. And then it said, then he would sprinkle all the people. So literally, if you came to worship right. in the Old Testament, to worship blood had to be applied. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission for sin. And so for them to worship, they had to be blood conscious or the blood had to be applied. Or you would say, there was much made of the blood. And the, the lamb that the blood came from back in the day in the Old Testament had to be a perfect spotless mm -hmm. lamb, right? Mm -hmm. And so Jesus was the perfect spotless lamb mm -hmm. of God. And so when they brought their lamb for their sacrifice, they had to present their lamb to the priest. Mm -hmm. And the priest would examine that lamb mm -hmm for any defects, it couldn't have any kind of had to be, uh, blindness or anything. It had to be spotless, perfect, perfect lamb because that was the mm -hmm. blood that was gonna come from that lamb had to be the spotless perfect. and perfect. And so the worshiper, you said, was accepted not because of his um, goodness or anything, but because of mm -hmm. the spotless lamb right, that so he you presented. Can, you can maybe look at it this way yeah. is that when the worshiper brought the lamb, mm -hmm. one perfect, spotless, flawless lamb, the perfect sacrifice, when he brought the lamb, one for every family, then the priest examined the lamb, and if the lamb was flawless and perfect, then they were accepted, or the worshipers were accepted based on the condition of the sacrifice they were not accepted based on the priest wasn't studying them, he's right. studying the sacrifice. So when you come to God through the blood of Jesus, then God looks at the blood of the lamb, the blood of Christ, which is the perfect sacrifice. And so God accepts us based on the condition of that sacrifice. And we are granted access in the presence of God to worship God because of the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. This is so powerful because, you know, religion wants to bring condemnation hmm. and separation from God and, and make people feel guilty. Hmm. But with the blood, it brings you close to God it brings you a sense of righteousness and freedom. And so- And, and the love of God. And the love, yes. The you mercies say, of God. I love the way Mark says, you know, the blood of Jesus is the liquid love of God. Because of the love of Christ, that the blood of Jesus is the liquid love of God that flows from the heart of God. In other words, it literally is God himself giving us the perfect sacrifice. And so it's the blood of God. It's divine blood. It's the blood of Christ. It's the blood mm. of the new creation. It's the blood of redemption. And so that blood is liquid love that flows from the heart of God. And it says, and by the power of the eternal spirit. Yeah. That's amazing, isn't it? So Hebrews the, chapter nine yeah. and verse 12 through 14, if you have your Bible. Let's look at And I that. want you That's to look good. at this phrase real quickly here. Hebrews 9, 12. 
says, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place and he obtained eternal redemption for mm -hmm. us. So what Jesus did after he's raised from the dead, he entered in once for all time, for mm -hmm. all eternity. He entered in once into the holy presence of God. He took his blood into the holy presence of God and he obtained eternal redemption for us. He purchased our freedom throughout eternity, not just through this life, eternal redemption, so that what Jesus did, he did it once and for all time and eternity. The moment the blood is applied, it has an eternal living power to set you free from sin, from Satan, from all the works of the enemy. And so he says, now go to verse 14. Yeah. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. All right, now here's the phrase that, that really catches you when yeah, you're, take it. a little time, Hebrews 9, 14. Mm -hmm. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, so now you see the blood of Jesus and the eternal spirit of God, that the spirit of God, that God is a spirit and the spirit of God and the blood of Jesus flow together. They are inseparable. That means that the spirit of God is in the blood. When you honor the blood, the Holy Spirit or the spirit of God works. Right when you honor the blood. So the blood of Jesus and the Spirit of God are eternally connected. So when you honor the blood of Jesus, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit himself works together with that blood and it reaches into the heart, into the conscience and cleanses you from an evil or guilty conscience or from sin consciousness or from a sense of failure from a sense of shame, and from a sense of struggling to try to be accepted before God. So the blood of Jesus reaches into the heart of the believer and removes sin consciousness. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. There's no doubt we're living in uncertain times. People are struggling with anxiety and have a lot of questions about what's going on in the world and how that will impact their future. Do you want to live an overcoming, victorious and faith-filled life? Faith in the blood of Jesus can help us live in the reality of our redemption, which gives real solutions to real people for real problems. In his book, The Bloodline of a Champion, Mark Hankins explains the power of the blood of Jesus. Not only will we clearly see what the blood has done for us, but also what it does in us as believers. With this offer, you'll also get a bonus two CD set, How to Have a Meeting with God. In this set, you'll understand how as believers, we have boldness and confidence to draw near to God. In His presence, we get answers, direction, help, strength, in fact, everything we need is in the presence of God. Your gift of any amount will help Pastor Mark Hankins train believers around the world. Order the Bloodline of a Champion package today. Call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Trust you enjoyed the program today talking about the blood of Jesus, the precious blood of Jesus and the power of that blood, redeeming power, cleansing power, healing power. We talk about our grandson, Dylan, and he has just been <laughs> pronounced uh, cured from leukemia. He got a bone marrow graft from his older brother, Gavin. And when we faced this challenge two years ago, the doctor, first of all, said, well, he is in remission. Well, but two years later, then they said, well, we have some bad cells. So that's when the doctor recommended a bone marrow graft. Uh, and so we got, uh, you got to find a donor 
And uh, his three brothers were donored. Gavin was the one that was chosen to be the donor. And, uh, and so Gavin's blood stem cells were put into Dylan's body. And when that happened, the doctor said, we're going to say goodbye to you, Dylan, which means you're not going to be the same person after this. And so once they were put in, it goes through weeks and months of quarantine. And then uh, finally, after all of that, the doctor came back and said, now Dylan's blood is 100 percent. Gavin's blood. So he said, really, she said, really, the, the uh, uh, remission, uh, the first time she said it was in remission, she said there is such a thing as remission, but it's partial remission, or it is a temporary remission. She said, but in this operation, bone marrow, we're going to go for 100% remission, or she called it molecular remission, or we'll call it absolute remission. Wow. So the way we dealt with this is we saw the power of the blood of Jesus and applied that blood by faith concerning our grandson. And we declared that if medical science can do something like this for a little boy, how much more shall the blood of Christ, no matter what situation has gone on in your life, that the blood of Jesus from the blood of his cross now flows into us. And we say goodbye to your past and goodbye to even your old personality. And we apply that blood by faith. And so I encourage you today to get this simple little book on the bloodline of a champion and how to have faith in the blood and how to apply the blood as well as the messages that we are offering and just feed your faith. And you might be facing a situation right now that looks impossible. And actually our grandson's condition looked impossible. But once we take the blood of Jesus and the power of that blood, it still has power today. And through faith in the blood of Christ, you apply that blood actually like you put it over the doorpost of your family and your life. And we did that together as a family. And the blood of Jesus began to work supernaturally, not only in our lives, but worked in our grandson's life. And today he has 100% remission or absolute remission, or the doctor called it molecular remission, which means there'll be no evidence he ever had leukemia because now his blood comes from a donor. And I'm telling you, the blood of Jesus brings your situation into absolute remission, molecular remission, and there'll be no evidence you ever had that problem through faith in the blood of Jesus. So I encourage you to feed your faith on the blood of Jesus, the bloodline of a champion, this book, and get the CDs and apply the blood every day and victory will be yours. I encourage you all week long, we're going to be listening, studying, and teaching and applying the blood of Jesus. The Mark Hankins Ministries app makes it easy for you to watch the latest TV broadcast, listen to the radio program, read our daily devotional, and stay connected with upcoming events. Download the app today on any smart device. Simply search Mark Hankins Ministries. Start feeding your faith anytime and anywhere.